An ugly custody battle is brewing, and it's between a superstar singer, Usher, and his ex-wife. It's unfolding once again, in fact. Uh, it's, we've been here before, but now we have a new incident. The five-year-old son of Usher, named Usher Raymond V, was swimming at his home in Atlanta on Monday and almost drowned. Apparently his arm got caught in the pool drain and Usher's aunt and a housekeeper noticed the accident. Uh, they were able to get that child out, but it was a sound technician who was doing some work at the house who was actually able to facilitate the rescue. Take a listen to the aunt's frantic call to 911. My nephew was in the pool and he, uh, he went I couldn't get him in. I couldn't. I couldn't get him. I tried to get him, and they got him out now doing CPR on him. He's five years old. Okay, stay with me. Is he oh. awake? Huh? Is he breathing? Is he breathing? Is he breathing? He's breathing. Yes, ma'am. Just harrowing to hear that. Usher won primary custody of his two sons with ex-wife Tamika Foster last year. And that custody fight was brutal and very public. And CNN has just learned that Tamika has filed a motion for an emergency custody hearing because of this pool accident. And both parties have been ordered to appear before a judge on Friday afternoon of this week. Last night, Piers Morgan spoke to Star Jones, who's a former prosecutor who's interviewed Usher and Foster before. And Piers asked her if this incident could have an effect on Usher's custody. Whenever there's a custody battle, the court's already decided based solely on the best interest of the child, mm. who is the more responsible parent to have primary custody. And unless you can show recklessness, negligence, or some sort of abuse, they are low to go ahead and disturb that custody right, arrangement. So I want to bring in defense attorney Danny Savalos and also defense attorney and former prosecutor Randy Zellin. Uh, Danny, I'm going to start with you. Do you agree with Star Jones? It's just about the recklessness and the, um, the abuse uh, or negligence that could change everything here, or could that actually be proven with the circumstances that we have seen unfold? She's right. There has to be some wrongdoing. I mean, it's not enough to show that an accident happened. Uh, it would, the... the um the mom would have to show that it's something that was reckless, someone did something wrong. This may have been a freak accident, and if that's the case, there's really no way to prevent that. Uh, but going forward, there are more allegations in this petition, specifically that, uh, that he's never around, that he's uh, gone almost 85% of the time, and it's because he is never around, that is why he leaves, uh, leaves the children in other caregivers who have not been approved, and often the uh, mom doesn't even know who they are. So this is what we call a petition based on changed circumstances. She's looking for a modification to change custody because she feels that uh, Usher isn't getting the job done. There are um, a lot of complaints that Ms. Foster makes, Randy Zellin, in her complaint, and, and obviously this is going to be reviewed by the court, but among them, uh, she's suggesting that she's not getting some of the time that she's requesting when Usher is away on those alleged 85% of the time, those days where he's away, and that those children are in the custody of family members or, or nannies, etc. Isn't every parenting plan kind of garden variety in stating who gets the right of first refusal to look after the children in the absence of the custodial parent? I mean, certainly there are boilerplates, as we like to call them, but every case stands on its own. And when parties have attorneys, the attorneys spend a lot of time and a lot of time negotiating. So you can have all different kinds of custody um, agreements. You can have agreements on who gets to determine what. Sometimes both parents get to determine things like medical, things like school, other times the parent with custody. So I can't say that it's cookie cutter, but what's interesting here you talk about changed circumstances. Usher did not become a star yesterday. He's been a star for quite some time. I don't think his travel schedule has changed. The commitments attended to being a star have changed, which means that the judge knew about Usher and his travel commitments and his life when he awarded Usher custody. So this is why we have an adversarial process. I'm very curious to hear what Usher has to say about this. And we will likely hear something because both Tamika Foster and Usher have been ordered to appear at that hearing on Friday. I also want to note, just before I, I let you guys go on this topic, that um, Tamika Foster 
I had a son who died last year. Uh, apparently, it was, it was an accident um, involving, a, I think, a, a tubing accident. If anybody knows what tubing is, it's going behind a boat with a tie on an inner tube and, and riding along a jet ski hit that tube, and her son uh, was killed uh, north of Georgia on a lake last year. Whether that would end up in this new hearing or not uh, is remain, you know, remains to be seen. But this is a, a very sad story all around, except for the fact that that child is um, is recovering. And so we're very happy to report. Uh, that the child is recovering. Uh, Danny and Randy, thank you for those comments. Stay right where you are because I got a couple of other cases to discuss with you later in the 